What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Tell the Tape, where I'm going to be breaking down, that's right, Isra Adesanya, Alex Pereira 4. Guys, this video wouldn't be possible without our sponsor, Cookie Go. Whenever you guys are looking to indulge, you guys want some good cookies, you guys want the munch, you guys love chocolate chip, you guys love cookies and cream, you guys love peanut butter like Triple C does, you guys make sure to go to your local store, go to, go to cookieco.com, and find your a local store near you. Guys, the Alex Pereira Israel Adesanya 4 5. That's coming up. That's the next UFC pay per view card. UFC 287. Who is it or why is it or what adjustments does Israel need to make in order for him to finally get rid of that kryptonite and Alex Pereira? Anyhow, enough talk. Let's get to the stats. So welcome to Tell the Tape, where I am going to be dissecting, that's right, Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pereira. The first thing that I see when I see this is right here. It took this man eight fights to become UFC champion. But you know why, though, he was able to get to Israel that quick? Is because this man opened his mouth. This man had two wins over this guy, and then eventually he ended up getting the third. Israel Adesanya, super experienced fighter, 23-2. and two. Pretty crazy, man, for MMA. Like, I had no idea he had that many fights. You know, 50 KOs, zero submissions. Six KOs, zero submissions. So, again, there's no, there's no submission games here. There's no submission threats with either one of them. They're both the same height. You know, Israel has a one-inch reach advantage on him, and he's just a little older. And now I would like to break down the strengths of Alex Pereira. The strengths of Alex per Pereira. Guys, let me tell you something about this man. This man, the first thing I think of him is right here, is power. Super power, and he has a durability to him which makes him extremely, extremely dangerous. One thing that I will say too about Alex Pereira who makes him dangerous too is his damn composure. Guys, when Israel Asanya hit him with that left hook, I want to say the, the end of round one, he was able to kind of be wobbled, but then come back normal as he possibly could. And I think that's also what makes uh, Alex Pereira extremely special. He may not have the best, uh, uh, he may not be super experienced in the sport of mixed martial arts, but something that he does have, and especially a, fi a fight against Israel Asanya, is he has combat experience. I mean, this is what makes Alex Pereira extremely, extremely dangerous. The fact that this man has hundreds of fights in kickboxing and develops somewhat of good defense with Glover to share a chain out there with him. And he's been able to develop that experience with when you just keep it here with Alex, you're in trouble. I don't care who you are or what you've done. But this man right now, 185 pounds, he is the most dangerous striker. And this is why he is the UFC champion. But what really defines him too is that beautiful left hook. That beautiful left hook that he has, the one that he caught Sean Strickland with, the one that he caught Israel to sign with, you know, made him do the stanky legs, put him on rollerblades. This is what makes this man extremely, extremely dangerous. With power to the left hook, with combat experience, and the fact that his face never moves. He's here the whole time. He's looking at you the whole time. And these are notes that all you fighters and all you fans should probably take notes. Now let's dissect his weaknesses. Alex Pereira's weaknesses. Number one, the thing that I would expose right away is right here, his grappling. His grappling, if Israel Adesanya was able to take him down and control him for, for, for that much of a time, then there's a way to beat this dude. There's a big hole in there, but he just happens to match up with a guy like Izzy whose takedowns are not that nice. They're actually pretty sloppy. What else? Izzy has, you know, Izzy has tested him in his chin two times. And if we go back to all his fights, I mean, this man has been touched, boom, and he's been able to come back in. But for how long will this last? How long? My arrows are like upside down. How long will this actually last? And those are only two times that we know in a hard fought fight with a four ounce glove. 
just imagine in a sport like mixed martial arts where it's a four ounce glove. And then the last one, the most important one, is right here, MMA experience. With eight fights, already has a UFC belt, but how good is he really? How does he match up against a guy like Robert Woodard who can mix it all? Yeah, he could beat Israel, but how does he match up with Apollo Bohashinia, who also brings a wrestling and a jiu-jitsu jiu threat? You know, Jared Cannonier, who could take people down a very, very strong body with good defense. I mean, these are the questions to be asked, and this is what I'll be looking in order for me to expose Alex Pereira. And now, let's move to the one and only Frozen. That's right. Israel Arasanya. What is it that makes Israel good? Man, I, I, I do want to add something here that my producer didn't add. Michael Wands over. You guys remember, remember him? Remember the guy that owes me a, a steak dinner? Is his spirit of competition. Yeah, sorry, man. I've, you know, People call me Dr. Cejudo sometimes, but his spirit of competition, whether I like him or not, the dude has that spirit of competition. He does want to compete. He really does. He, he enjoys the limelight. He enjoys being the center of attention and he will do his flips, tricks and traits in order for him to, you know, boost his, boost his ego a little bit. But that's also what makes Israel good. His fakes and faints. And, I, and I, I sometimes I wonder if you middleweights at 185 pounds, even watch what he's doing because he'll pull people in. He does a really good job with those lower body feints and then he'll come back, he'll get you to come in, he'll either kick you or he'll punch you as soon as you get into his fight zone. His face, his twitchiness. You know, this is, that to me, this is why Israel is beating people right here. There's something as simple as his fakes. Foom, foom, and his, and not just that, but also his composure. And one thing that I will give him credit for, is even when Robert Whitaker did take him down, he always pressed Robert Whitaker, and that just showed me like, okay, this guy gets the game because when somebody doesn't get a takedown or you're able to stand up on your feet, sometimes people tend to kind of like wibble wobble, go out and do certain things like that. But Israel does a really good job of staying in that, that kick range as people want to call it. I call it something else, but he stays and he's able to press you, maybe get you to throw, get you to come in. That's when he'll whack you, start chopping your legs down. Yep, his confidence, his confidence. His confidence is what makes, uh, again, what makes Israel, that goes back to this spirit of competition. You know, he believes he's the greatest ever. He believes he can walk on water, and if you believe that, then okay. You know, it could make it great. I, I don't, <laughs> or maybe I do. And then last but not least is leg kicks. Chopping people down. He'll invest like he did with Uriah Romero. He will invest in his leg kicks like he did with Robert Whitaker. And then eventually start coming up and then take and then take his head off. You know, these are Israel Adesanya's strengths. And this is why he was able to defend his title for so many for so many years. But now let's get to the real factor, his weaknesses. Israel Adesanya's weaknesses. Number one to me, his stance, his position. He's too wide. Israel's stance is like this. You see, this is why, and I said it before, if you guys watch my past five feedbacks that I did on Israel Adesanya, it's like, why isn't nobody kicking his damn legs, chopping these things down? Because he's too much like this. It's hard to get out. When your stance is too wide like McGregor, like Israel Adesanya, yeah, you could kick, but you could also be kicked. It's super hard when your stance is super wide. It's hard for you to get out. His stance should be more like this. I think if Israel could really change that, he'd become a different fighter. But because that's all he's ever done is stick that leg out there. And this is the reason why Alex Pereira nailed it. And I swear to you, I said it in five feet back, attack this man's legs. Number one. Number two is wrestling. His wrestling is super, super suspect. Super suspect. He, he did have the ability to get up against a lot of uh, people, but 
when you get a guy who has better striking than you, what are you going to use? How are you going to be? Are you going to outstrike a guy who beat you three times in a row? Like, Israel, give attention to this and really believe in this, bro. Because if you do, man, then you, you'd be a whole nother level of fighter. Yeah. And right here. He's stagnant. He'll fake, but he'll stay in that position for too long. You know what I mean? He'll, he'll stay in that position rather than kind of moving his feet, kind of getting that glide and then start going. Sometimes he'll stay, he'll stay put. You know, does he have that conditioning of kind of moving laterally, you know, other than fakes from the bottom, fakes up top? Do you have other stuff that you can maybe clinch and get into? And then, yeah, not but not least, this kryptonite. I don't think it's a mental block. I just think I, th I just think uh, at that time Alex Pereira is is just a better striker than him, and that's a question that I have for Israel Adesanya. How good are you here? Anybody can beat you. There's a lot of people that can beat me, even in wrestling. But when it comes to this, ain't no man on this planet beating me. How good are you here, Izzy? How good is your MMA? How good can you mix uh, your striking? with your wrestling you know so these so these this is the breakdown of the weaknesses that i see the strength and weaknesses that i see with israel adesanya and alex Pereira. and now watch from their from their third fight i mean these are the statistics here you know significant strikes 86 to 91. you guys keep in mind though too the significant strikes this man got got all of these i think it was what is it round five when he finished them the majority of these so you you also want to say israel how good is your stamina dude you know accuracy accuracy you know they're both pretty pretty but again a lot of a lot of times in that third fight this is where this man came in he was a lot more accurate so this number went up as the rounds went up you see a little different strikes thrown 140 to 119 takedowns one to takedowns and then they both took each other once but look at the difference here and this is where i feel if izzy had a good coach and a good tactician once i'm sure he does what they're doing i see at city kickboxing you know they're they're producing they're producing great champions they, they really are but this is where you can expose them israel this is where you could expose them right here six minutes and 34 seconds of control time. You know what I'm saying? You might have lost in all of this, but this tells you something. You know, I base everything based off of numbers. This right here, control time, tells you so much on what is it that, how is it that you're gonna beat the kryptonite, the king right now, Alex Pereira. How? That looks a little weird. My crown sucks, but you see what I'm saying? Like, how is it that he's going to beat a guy like Putan who has that strength, that power? I can tell you guys right now, there's two options. You either take him down, and I really, I try to be as simple as I can. You use the time control up top, or you point fight. You point fight this thing, because it's not about, you're going to know this, Israel. It's not about the crowd. Don't get into this Michael Chandler type stuff. Don't get into, like, the whole roars and, oh, I could do it type thing. Be a winner. Be a winner. Find ways to win. It doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. You just have to find a way to win. You know, that's and that's a Henderson Hoodle phrase too, if you guys don't know. <laughs> so prediction time. Who is it that's gonna win the quadrilogy? It all depends if Israel made those adjustments in that fight. If he add, if if Israel did not add somebody to his camp, it's gonna be the same guy. It really is. And no offense to any of his coaches. I've seen this a lot. And there's one thing that I've always done is I've always brought somebody new in to really bring in and to challenge me in other positions that that I probably need help on. That's non-biased. That's strictly business. But if Israel Asanya kept as keeping the same, it, it's not about loyalty. Because remember, guys, you're you're a true champion. Is not loyal to his team. It's not loyal to him. It's not loyal to himself. You know what it is? 
you have to be loyal to your dream. And if you're loyal to your dream, you will become a winner. This is this is where I feel that if you made those transitions, I can see Izzy playing the distance game, point fighting, and then maybe look for something big to eventually take him down. Because he did, as we saw before, he had six minutes and 34 seconds of control time. What does that tell you? That tells you that you have something there. Take him into the deeper rounds and then start looking for your takedowns. Maybe point fight him for the first three and the next two, maybe start using your grappling. Again, we need that tactical sense, but I just think Israel is just, he's stuck. He just believes he can beat him in his style. So for that reason, I just i just can't. And I'm actually cheering, somewhat cheering for Israel, but, but not really, you know, because uh, I haven't seen enough from Israel from the transitions that he adds somebody. I just feel like this man's power, the fact that he's already beaten him three times, I think four times as he just puts a stamp on it. Izzy, I want to go with you. I like you, even though it seems like I hate you. Actually, I respect you, man, because you've done a lot of good things and you've been a lot of great competitors. But to go along with your fashion, I'm going to put some nice little earrings on you with your nice little necklace. But I'm gonna have to go with none other than Alex Pereira. Guys, thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, Henry Sudo, AKA Triple C. And you guys know that I will always deliver a big shout out to our sponsor, Cookie Co's. Whenever it is that you guys got the munchies like KG to the deal double G, you guys know where to go. All natural ingredients. These people, guys, when I indulge, I love to go to Cookie Co's. So again, Thanks, thanks again, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C, and we are out. So thank you guys again for watching. It means a lot to me. So you guys remember, there's more breakdowns, there's more technique, there's more tactics, and there's definitely more cringe. So make sure to subscribe and click on that button. I'm out.